or something like that. It's really good, though. This one's really good. So did, if you got your handouts, the change model for fear, that, that is basically just that. It's a model of transformation for somebody who struggles with fears. Um, it's pretty simple, so I'm not going to like take the time to go over this. As you get to reading it and look up the scripture, uh, you'll, be, you'll be familiar with the scripture. All right, and then there's the discussion questions. And uh, Jamie, could you open us up in prayer this afternoon, pretty please? Amen. All right. So next week there will not be class, of course, because of the members' meeting. Um, the week after that, on the 17th, we have asked uh, some, a, a couple that is are also biblical counselors, um, noetic biblical counselors. They've been through the same training we have. Uh, they've been teaching this series a little longer. And so we asked if they could just come facilitate just the one class on the 17th because I was hoping that you guys could hear her testimony on what noetic counseling has done for her and her life. And then um, her husband will handle the discussion questions, if any, because it's going to be on temptation. So that now we're going to start getting into things that are a, a lot deeper. Um, and so, and also, I need, to, I need to ask the pastor about this, but we thought, well, if we're ever, if there's ever an emergency or, or some, for some reason we can't get here. For me personally, I don't like the, I don't really care for the breaks. I think I shared that with you guys because once you get momentum going, you want to keep it going um, when you're teaching noetic counseling. And so I thought, well, maybe this way, you know, somebody who's done it before would be able to step in for a, an emergency class. We're not looking to use them or have them replace us or anything like that, just kind of in an emergency situation. So um, their names is, is Sean and Sarah, and I think, you'll, I think you'll like them, and I think you'll enjoy their testimony and um, John talking about the discussion questions. If you guys have any questions about temptation, he, he would be a good one to uh, ask and get some biblical answers from. All right, so I also mentioned last week that, you know, Noetic counseling is not for everybody because it requires transformation, not just soberness, not just a behavioral change. If he gets too too noisy, I'm going to ask you to take it. Okay, all right. Um, so I just just to let you guys know, that is the difference. So who can tell me? I asked last week. You know what is noetic counseling? So can you guys tell me this Sunday what noetic counseling is? Anybody? Uh -huh. No? All right. All right, so if somebody asks what is noetic counseling, it is counseling sin's effect on the what? Mind, mind. That's right, mind, will, and emotions. Because in the Bible, the heart, that's what the heart is, is it's our mind, our will, our emotions, our soul. So it's basically on the center of our beings. So, um, all right. And that's because behavioral change won't last. All right. The sin nature extends to the motives and intentions of a heart. Counselors are trying to seek out those motives and intentions to find the root cause, the emotions that then lead to the sinful or fruitful response, and then what the remedy is and the reconciliation is. So learning and understanding the root cause is very important because you can't counsel a fictitious person. So if you're not asking the right questions and really get to know them, then you're, they're going to be counseling a, fi a fictitious person. So through your, your personal data information sheet, your open-ended questions, um, your medical records, if any, all of those things together, the Holy Spirit's going to help you to see their theology on life, the root cause of the emotions that, have, that they have listened to and responded ungodly with. But 
Also remember, you can have fruitful responses and you can have sinful responses. So when you're talking to somebody and you're asking them questions and you're having them fill out things, you, you might get somebody that you've seen has done some, uh, you know, there's been some godly responses. All right, so that's what I've done with the cases. And uh, several of you had asked if I would speak to um, a few of the cases. And uh, I, I know Shannon was one, and she's, she's not here, but I'm not sure who her partner was. So I don't know if they, is, is there anybody here that would rather me not speak to? Um, no? Okay. All right, so for Harry Potter, I'm going to start with that one. All right, and I'm going to go over these just really quickly so that we can get going. So for the Harry Potter case, um, here's what I did with each of them. I took, I looked to see if you guys found the root cause of their, all right, the root cause, their emotions, and then their sinful response. So really what you're looking for is the root cause of their sinful response. And so that's the way you do a case. And um, most of you, and this is good, you said that, you know, the, that not trusting God, not having faith in God was the root cause. And in a way, that's true. Um, but what you're looking for in a case, I mean, in the big picture, that's true. But in a case, you look for the condition of the heart. So like, um, well, let, let, me, let me go over some of these. Like uh, in Harry Potter, uh, there was a lot of good catches in this one. I'm not sure which couple, which two had this one. Root of the sinful behavior is broken relationships and a guilty conscience. So see, that would have been the condition of the heart. The emotions that presented were fear, worry, anxiety, anger, jealousy. Where there's selfish ambition and jealousy, there's every evil work. You can read that in James 3, 16 through 17, and that's where I would take this person. Um, so his sinful response is lies, deceit, jealousy, selfish ambition. The opposite of that is wisdom, peace, peace, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and sincerity. So the great catch was that they, somebody wrote on there, um, this is the Jacob and Esau story, and that's exactly where I got it. So that was a good catch, for one thing. Uh, clarity about salvation was needed, that was a good catch. Uh, they had no concept of sin, lack of remorse. His biggest worry is not that he's not bringing God glory in his life, but that his sister may retaliate. So I thought that was a really good key thing to catch on this particular case. They had great questions. Um, a great plan for reconcili reconciliation back to God for this person and reconciliation uh, to other family members. Um, and if somebody had written, be patient with the sister because he had taken more money, more than just money from the sister. So I guess I really, I don't think I have time to read the cases, but you guys that didn't read the case, you wouldn't know what the actual case is. So we're probably sitting here going, okay, what? So that sounds good. Maybe I just do a, a few of these because I don't think I have time to do all of them. Um, the one I was asked was to do the Bugsy Bunny one. So I think I'll do that one because that was, that was um, kind of a harder case. So let me read that one real quick. Bugsy Bunny is a single 50-year-old male. He has been in the United States for 30 years now and makes a meager living as a stand-up comedian. He does attend a Baptist church. Although he is a comedian, he suffers quietly from a deep insecurity. His reviews are dropping. His manager is telling him he is distracted and not doing a good job anymore, so he's worried about being dropped. He is in great debt, and this career is not always a lucrative one. A large amount of his income is going to buy alcohol in addition to what he's provided during his performances. He has shared with his pastor about his exhaustion, exhaustion with his need to be on all the time like comedians do. And so, this was a great breakdown. I noticed that the breakdown of the whole summary was very organized, so that was a good job. There were great questions, what, the, what led to his debt. Um, and ask him what he means by I have to be on all the time, you know, kind of clarification for that. So the heart condition, which is the motives, motives and intentions of the heart, uh, the 
the root was a people pleaser. So he was a people pleaser. Emotions presented were anxiety, fear, worry. People have let him down. This job is where he put his ultimate hope. And that's what I was hoping that whoever got this particular case would realize. That's where his heart was and this desire to please was leading him down a dangerous outcome. He is trusting in man and they let him down and he let his and then he let his responsibilities to God go rather than pursuing God's direction since the one he put his trust in was failing him. Uh, was the alcohol an escape? To what degree was he drinking and for how long? All of those questions were good. Uh, encouraging him to get connected to, the, to a church and a body of Christ. Always do that with all of your counselees. That's really important. Even seeing that they get uh, you know, connected to some type of a, a, a ministry that's within the church. And um, praise for humbly speaking with the pastor, going to receive help beyond himself. That was wonderful. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7 was the scripture that they would have used to humble himself, intentionally pursue God, seek God's face. On this particular case and several like it, I have used Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17, that chapter, has touched so many hearts of the counselees that I personally have counseled. It's a great chapter to use. It, 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 it shows where they should be as a Christian as far as you know, being being planted next to living water, and then when the heat comes, they've got this already living water, and they can sustain the heat. And so, it's it's a great chapter to use to take take walk somebody through. Um, I may have to use a couple Sundays to do this. <laughs> All right, um, Janice Joplin, let's do that one, it's a shorter one. All right, so Janice Joplin's a 40-year-old female that's suffering with a difficult situation. She begins to tell you she is distressed because she is unable to conceive a child. She is particularly upset because her husband has a child from a previous relationship with a lady named Joni Mitchell. Janice <laughs> says she feels Joni is taunting and flaunting this interface she is having trouble getting out of bed and starting her day. She needs help. All right, so the heart condition, the wants, the needs, the must-haves, the root cause is an unfulfilled desire, which would have been, you know, to have children, and then perceived harassment. This one, I really enjoyed the way it was broke down by the, the team that did it. Um, a great, a great way to start with this person would be to write out the sentence, I would not feel this way if only, and then let them fill that out. That would be a great uh, application question to, to have them do. Um, the emotions, so the root cause was unfulfilled desire, perceived harassment. The emotions chosen were all four of them, which were correct. The sinful response to these emotions are staying in bed, neglecting the care of her husband, discontented with her circumstances. So um, you definitely want to discuss salvation. Uh, also speak to her, her, what I would have done. I mean, you all know me. I would have set up a meeting with the ex and to see if, you know, to see where her heart was and just kind of be like the, the mediator and, and have a good, a good discussion about where her heart was. Is there really taunting going on or is she just so insecure she's thinking this woman is, flaunting and taunting, you know what I mean, in her face. Um, going over Matthew 6 would be great with her. Having her write out prayers of God's sovereignty, that's a great assignment. Um, and then discuss the relationship with Christ for her husband. Like, talk to him, find out where he stands theologically. So, I'll be real honest with you guys, a, a lot of these were... For a group of people who um, was not able to tell me what athletic counseling was, you guys did, did all of these great. I was just really impressed. I was really happy. And, um, you know, praise God, you guys are listening. That's what I wanted to know is if you guys are listening. Then. Maybe you could keep doing like one a week. Yeah, instead of, instead of doing so many of these, maybe I'll just... Yeah, that'd be easier. Because because there's lessons. What I notice is there's lessons from each one of these. That's really good. 
So that's a good suggestion. All right, well, there's four, and if anybody wants to look at these a little more carefully, I can give you a copy of them. But that's all I had because Jim Newhouser does a great job with fear, uh, you know, teaching about fear on this one, so I don't have a lot to say about that. So, Kaylin? So, no recap. Huh. All right, so does anybody have any questions? I thought Jim, like, thoroughly did a good, good job on this lesson on fear. And of course, usually if there's anxiety and worry and anger, you've got fear as well. So, like, like, like I said, they're all kissing cousins. But, um, so does anybody have any questions about this one? And your discussion questions are, are pretty clear as well. But these are always really good. Like I said, these will answer a lot of your questions and help you on your exams and that kind of thing. All right, well, I guess we'll let out pretty early <laughs> All right, well, Jacob, will you close us out in prayer? Uh, thank you so much just for the wisdom, Lord, that has uh, just been reminded that you conquered all things, that nothing hurt will over here. No matter what it may be, the diagnosis or a loss of a loved one or the unknown, we can't control the world. We know that we're sovereign and we're in control, and our hope and our joy and our peace come from you that we love the Father. We thank you that you are kind, you are patient, and you are a gentle father that is compassionate and caring and willing to give us your word to help us in your promises that you will never leave us or forsake us more than that. You are for us to make us more in your image, Lord. Tell us not to be fearful or anxious over and over again, Lord. Just trust in you. And we pray that for each person in this room today, Lord, and as we counsel others and report them. Point them to your business and your truth, and we don't get caught up in politics or things of this world. Our hope comes in the reign and rule of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.